स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया right well there is an an even simpler method to do that rather than doing all this laborious work we could look at this problem in another way and it is much more intuitive to look at this second way so to see that notice that let us see what is the length of the path taken by the light in each of the media so length so i would say not another way but another solution uh, well another i would say another way to find the solution right so that's more appropriate so let us look at the line the total path length of the two segments along which light travels right length of the two segments traveled by light itself we see that the total lengths are square root of x minus x not square well in the first case it is traveling from x not y not to x star y star so the total length of the path is the following quantity and the second setup is that the total length is x star minus x1 square plus y star minus y1 square right so these are my total path lengths in each of the segments or in each of the media so which means my total my total time the total time taken by the light traveling from point x0 y0 to x1 y1 which is a function of y star which is an unknown parameter is the total path length the total path length divided by the speed of light in each of the media right so that is as simple as that so total length divided by total divided by the velocity in each media is going to give me the total time that the the light particle takes from going from point a to point b so now we have a function which is purely a one variable function and the one variable is y star so now to find to find the minimum time we have to differentiate we we differentiate this t with respect to y star to find the critical value of y star and let us see what happens so this becomes when we differentiate with respect to y star we see that this is y star minus y0 divided by c0 times this particular quantity x star minus x0 square plus y star minus y0 square minus y1 minus y star divided by c1 times square root of x star minus minus x1 square plus y star minus y1 square under the root right now let me just recall the diagram here so the diagram let me just go back of a slide here so notice that notice that this particular quantity this particular quantity that is what i am showing here is is well we need to see uh, properly uh, this particular quantity here is uh, is y star minus y0 right and so so y star and this particular quantity here which is the length of the path which is traveled by the light this is nothing but x star minus x0 square plus y star minus y0 square so notice that this divided by this is going to give me sine of this angle sine of phi not right so going back to our slide next slide again we see that this particular quantity here which i have circled is nothing but 
the sign of the angle or the sign of the angle of incidence sin of phi naught. So, what we get we well of course, we, to find the, the critical point we set this expression equal to 0, but this expression is nothing but the following expression sin of phi naught divided by c naught is equal to minus sorry minus sin of phi 1 divided by c 1 this is equal to 0 or let me just rewrite this expression that that these two quantities are equal. Well, people who have done science in class 12th, they will immediately recognize that this is nothing but the famous Snell's law, right. So, in class 12th, we are taught Snell's law, we are just given the expression, but we are not shown how we are, we get this expression. So, what, what this example shows that the time taken by the light is such that it always follows the Snell's law, right. So, 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 the moral of the story is the following. What we have is that the minimum, the minimum time taken by light particle, the minimum time taken by the light particles is such that Snell's law, Snell's law is, is satisfied, right. So, people with the high, with a basic science background in high school they all are familiar with snell's law but they don't know how how does it satisfy the, the the time taken by the light particles so today in this lecture we have shown exactly that right so we can we can continue this discussion by looking at the various we can extend this this problem as to the the the, the path followed by the light in different different medias not only just one media but may be several medias, right. So, we have media 1, media let me call this as media 0, media 1, media 2, media 3 and what happens that in each of these medias, let me call this angle of incidence as phi naught and phi 1 and then phi 2 and phi 3, right. So, in each of these mediums, so, so for multiple for multiple boundaries, for multiple boundaries, the, the minimum will always be such that Snell's law is satisfied at, at each boundary, right, at each boundary, ok. However, what we have seen is, we have not exactly used the Euler-Lagrange equations uh, in its purest form we have broken down the problems into simpler bits and applied Euler Lagrange equations in each of these bits, wherever the solution is continuous, right and continuously differentiable up to second order, right. So, which means, well although this problem was fairly simple, in general, in general dealing with, dealing with kinks, dealing with kinks or, or derivative discontinuities, derivative discontinuities is not very easy and in that case the Euler Lagrange equations uh, do not work, they do not work because of the underlying assumption of having second order continuous partial derivatives, right. So, in that case we have to use a special result known as the Weierstrass the Weierstrass Erdman, the Weierstrass Erdman, Erdman, Erdman condition that is a condition of broken extremal which we will introduce in around the 10th lecture of this uh, lecture discourse. So, we are going to deal with broken extremals in detail, but right now I have just introduced with an example, ok. So, finally, Finally, we let us now look at the fourth case of our special case of Euler Lagrange. The fourth case is the case of degenerate solution, right. So, here I have a functional, recall that in this case the functional is of the form x0 to x1 a of x comma y, y prime plus b of x comma y dx right where where i assume 
we are assume that a of a comma b are smooth functions are smooth functions of x and y a and b are smooth functions of x and y otherwise we won't be able to apply euler lagrange again so let us now apply euler lagrange if we apply euler lagrange equations we see that the equations reduces to the following notice that there is just the linear dependence on y prime so my partial of y prime will reduce to only this expression a so i get that ddx of a x comma y minus the partial of f so this is my small f this is my small f or the integrand so the partial of f with respect to y is going to give me using chain rule y prime partial a partial y plus partial b partial y right because y prime sorry y only appears in the expressions a and b right and we see that we we, we uh, well this is set equal to 0 notice notice that we can always reduce this ordinary derivative into partial derivative so this is also equal to y prime del partial a partial y prime plus partial a partial x right so we see that when we when we strike off this with this we can we we get the following expression we see that the reduced uh, the euler lagrange reduces to the following neat expression that that partial a partial x which is this quantity is equal to partial b partial y which is this quantity here right or or let me just say that ax is equal to by right so in this case my extremal will be such that this particular relation gets satisfied so i will not get y explicitly as a function of x but i am going to get a relation which is satisfied by the extremal y right so so let me call this expression by 4 so there are two observations so we say that y is an extremal in this case y is an extremal provided provided y satisfies y satisfies 4 right so this is an implicit this is an implicit implicit equation for y of x right okay how about well this is the case when y needs to satisfy this this boxed relation 4 how about a case where this is trivially satisfied for all x and y so we can look so this is my let me call this as case case well let me call this as uh, well let me call this as case 4 a where this if this holds then 4 needs to be satisfied we could also have another case let me put a big r and move on to the next slide we could have another case let me call this as 4 b where suppose suppose 4 the boxed expression 4 which is ax equal to by by is is satisfied is satisfied for all x and y right so which means which means that this this particular expression this particular equation is an identity right so it is satisfied for all x and y then this is an identity which means which means that there is there is no restriction no restriction on y we just cannot find the extremal however however this particular setup this particular setup guarantees 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 the existence of another function existence of another function another function phi phi which is a differentiable function 
right it guarantees the existence of another function which is a differentiable function right such that such that phi of y is a and phi of x is b why because notice that if we were to take assume this expression we see that phi of y x is a x which is also equal to b y which is also equal to phi of x y. So, if phi is differentiable then immediately this result is trivial phi of y x is equal to phi of x y the mixed derivatives are equal. So, which means that if this is an identity the boxed expression is an identity then there is there is another phi such that such that phi satisfies this particular uh, this particular set of two relations and and my f the integrand which is a y prime plus b I re replace a by phi y. So, this is phi y times y prime and b is phi x we see that this is nothing but the total derivative of phi with respect to x right. So, in this case my functional j of y which is the integral of f dx which is also the integral of d phi the total derivative of phi with respect to x times dx which is nothing but the integral of d phi and this will be from point phi 0 to phi 1. So, this will be phi of x 1 y 1 minus phi of x 0 y 0. So, notice that this particular integral is an exact differential right this particular integral is an exact differential and notice that this particular quantity that we have found is independent it is independent of y of x. So, you just cannot find the extremal in this case because regardless of y the the functional is always going to reduce to this constant which only depends on the end points right. So, now let us look at an example uh, in this case. So, so, let me call this as example 5. So, I have that f is f of x y y prime be given by this expression x square plus 3 y square times y prime plus 2 x y right. So, note if this is my a and this is my b note that if I were to evaluate a x. So, a x is 2 x and if I were to evaluate b y, b y is also 2 x. So, what I get is that a x is equal to b y is equal to 2 x or a x is equal to b y, b y for all x and y right. So, we see that this is an identity. So, this is an, ident an identity in this particular example. So, which means, so which means that my functional described by this function f is path independent, is path independent functional, is path independent functional and which means, which means that my exact so, all I need to do is to find the exact differential phi that is the function phi. So, the exact differential phi is given by phi of phi of y let us go back one slide the exact differential is phi of y is a and phi of x is b right. So, phi of y is a and phi of x is b. So, a is given by x square plus 3 y square and b is given by 2 x y. So, 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 what we do is we we integrate we integrate with respect to y and we get that phi of x comma y is equal to x square y plus y cube plus a function of which is purely a function of x. Then when we differentiate with respect to x we see that this is also equal to 2 x y plus g prime of x which will also be equal to using the second relation this is also equal to b 
which is equal to 2 x y showing that g prime of x is equal to 0 or or g of the function g of x is a constant let us denote it by c. So, which means which means that my exact differential phi of x comma y is x square y plus y cube plus a constant of integration which is c. Right? So, we are almost done here by saying if we were to look at the functional, the functional which is the integral of f dx will be path independent which is nothing but from x 0 to x 1 of d phi which is nothing but phi of x 1 y 1 minus phi of x naught y naught which is all I have to do is to substitute the value of phi at x 1 at x 1 y 1 and we just cancel out the constant of integration and minus x naught y naught plus y naught q. So, regardless of the function y, I am always going to get the value of the functional to be a constant which depends only on the final and the initial points. Right? So, finding the extremal is in this case is a useless exercise. Right? So, what I have done is the following. So, so, so let me let me rewrite this entire exercise in case 4 in the form of a theorem. Let me state the result in the form of a theorem and this theorem is simple enough so that we can also give a quick proof to the this result. So, I denote this theorem by theorem 3. The theorem says that suppose, suppose, suppose the functional, suppose the functional j is integral f dx has extremals, the integral j has extremals with has extremals with with continuous and 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 smooth derivatives, right. So, this will be the final result in our lecture series. So, uh, j has extremals with continuous smooth smooth derivatives up to up to second order right and uh, well extremals up to second order uh, such uh, with well I forgot to mention the extremal is an extremal with fixed endpoints. So, we are still looking at fixed endpoint problems right and and such that the Euler Lagrange equation equation reduces reduces to an identity it reduces to an identity identity then then what I have is that the integrand the integrand of this functional this integrand f must be must be linear in y prime right and and the value the value of the functional the value of the functional functional is independent independent of y right so what i have said in this result is the following that whenever the Euler Lagrange, this is the most important uh, part of the statement. Whenever Euler Lagrange reduces to an identity, it necessarily going to give us the case 4. That is, the integrand will always be a linear function of y prime, right. So, so this is as if we are saying that an identity in the Euler Lagrange will. Uh, if and only if with a necessary and sufficient condition will lead to a case to the case described by the case 4 right so so let me do a quick proof before we end our uh, our lecture session uh, so so suppose so as, let us assume that the euler lagrange equation is an 
is an identity, the Euler Lagrange equation is an identity, right. So, which means, which means that, that we have the following equation satisfied for all x y, right, d d x of del y del y prime is equal to 0 and this is satisfied for all x y, since Euler Lagrange is an identity. Now, let me rewrite this expression using chain rule, I get that this is partial f partial y minus partial x partial 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 x of partial f partial y prime minus par second partial derivative of f with respect to y and y prime minus partial f partial y prime square y double derivative. And of course, this is equal to 0 as we have shown on the left hand side. Now, we are doing a problem in which f is a function of x, y and y prime. So, the maximum derivative argument uh, that f has is only up to first order, which means, which means that the only term which contains the second derivative of y is this following quantity. And since we do not have any uh, terms involving second derivative of y, right, since, so what I am saying is the following, since y prime appears appears only only uh, so only in the last uh, in the last term right and f is only a function of x y and y prime which means that there won't be an explicit appearance of any terms involving y double prime so which means that the coefficient of y double prime which is partial second partial derivative of f with respect to y prime this is equal to 0 right. So, that comes from here right. So, from here I can directly deduce that f of x y y prime is a linear function of y prime right. So, that comes right away and further further further. So, I have set this equal to 0, which means that the rest of the quantities will also be 0. So, further since I have, so I am just rewriting this, this remaining quantity. So, partial f partial y minus partial x partial partial x of partial f partial y prime minus partial 2 f of partial y partial y prime, this is set equal to 0. And when when we replace f by this quantity a y prime plus b, we are going to get the relation a x is equal a of x is equal to b of y. The derivative of a with respect to x is equal to b of y. And this is satisfied for all x in x naught x 1 and for all y in the set of second order continuously differentiable functions satisfying the boundary condition. So, so the moral of the story is whenever we have the Euler Lagrange equation being an identity, we always have that the integrand is a linear function of y and that the Euler Lagrange equation finally reduces to this neat expression a x is equal to b y. So, thank you for listening. In the next lecture, I am going to talk about certain other, uh, other topics related to Euler Lagrange, namely the invariance the existence uniqueness and further generalization of Euler-Lagrange equations. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much.